Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Graham Kelly, formerly of Bray Wanderers, caretaker coach or caretaker manager for two spells at the club four years. Uh, what other roles did you do at the club? Uh, I started off as under 17 manager when the under 17 league started, um, which was four years ago or three years ago, I think it was, and um, was in that role for a year and then was moved up to under 19 as manager then. And then when Harry Kenny took over the first team, he asked me to become part of the staff with himself and Liam O'Brien. So was, that, was that just last season? Right? That was the season before when, when Harry first took over, which was halfway through the, the season before last. Um, which was fantastic, you know, and, and great experience from working with them people, uh, which was really good. So I worked with the lads, for Harry and Liam, for a year and a half. And then this year, um, Dave Mackey asked me to be part of his coaching staff as well when, when he took the job. So, uh, yeah, really good experience. Yeah, and then kind of going from that, obviously there was you know, the worry of last season with the the, the financial stuff, and um, was was that in the back of your mind at all coming into the new season? Yeah, it, it's always there, you know. But like I sat down, I had a good chat with Dave. It was actually I think it was the day after Stephen's day. It was Christmas time when when I met up with Dave and, and had a chat with him, and he was assured that you know there wouldn't be the same problems again. Um, and uh, spoke to the chairman briefly on it, and, and again Jerry Mulvey was assured by people that were coming in, investors were coming in with him, that the problem wouldn't happen again. But unfortunately, the things changed during the season and um, we we had problems, obviously, you know, which were, were tough times. Yeah. Now, before all that kind of happened, what was it like for you stepping in um, as caretaker manager for the first time? What was that like yeah, for yourself? It was, it was brilliant, you know. So, like, obviously, I was sorry to see Dave go. And Dave, Dave's a really nice guy and, and a really good coach, you know. But when Dave resigned, um, Jerry Movey had rang me and asked me would I be interested in doing caretaker manager, which I was only delighted to do. You know, fantastic experience for me, you know, working with a great bunch of players. So uh, our next two games when I went in were Dundalk and Shamrock Rovers back to back on a weekend and you're thinking, you know, this this could be tough times. We hadn't won a game. But uh, And two full time teams as well. Yeah, and two really strong sides as you say. But the the first game against Dundalk on the Friday night um, we put in a really good performance. We were one nil down and um, we, we actually had a really good game that, that day. We played really well. They, they scored our second goal and I think it was 92nd or 93rd minute. Um, so we took confidence from, from that performance. Um, we had one more training session before we played Rovers on the Monday night. Um, and, and luckily enough, that, that was a really tight game, but we um, we, we snuck a one nil win with Ronald Cochran scoring that night, which was, which was a great lift for everybody because obviously the press had made a big thing that we hadn't won a game. So that was obviously a lot of pressure on the players and, and the staff as well. So just to get that way lifted was fantastic. And look, that, that's a memorable, memorable moment for me this season. Yeah, and it obviously must have been nice for you to be the one to get the first victory of the season then as well. Yeah, of course it is. But, but personally? Yeah, personally it was. But like, it, it was more about the players, you know. Um, there was a lot of pressure on the players. There was a lot of negative comments about the players, which I felt was unjust, you know. I thought they were a good bunch of lads. Um, results hadn't gone away. Obviously, the first game of the season, fantastic result up in Dundalk, and they'll all draw. But after that, then it, it just didn't work out for for one reason or another, you know. So to get that first win of the season, it just lifted that weight off everyone's shoulders, and, and we were able to progress on then and pick up another couple of points, which was was a brilliant lift for everyone around the club, fans, supporters, everybody, you know. Yeah, and then it seems to be disappointing then, because obviously as results were getting better, and then as the season kind of progressed, then all this, the the trouble started again, and. Um, with the with the financial side of things, what was that like for you? You know, I imagine you weren't getting paid. The players weren't getting paid. Like, how was how was it like for you to motivate these players? You know that you they're told to go out and do their job, but yet they're not getting paid for it. So were you? Yeah, it was tough. It was tough for everybody. Like staff weren't paid, players weren't paid. So it's everybody's coming in and everybody's feeling a little bit down. And you're just trying to make the the training sessions high intensity, a bit of fun. You're trying to pick lads up because. You know, football is football, and sometimes you know football can get away from all your troubles or your problems. But it's hard when people aren't getting paid, you know. But in fairness, to everybody, players and staff, everyone stayed as professional as they could, you know. And um, obviously, as it went on, then the players obviously had to go to the PFAI, and the PFAI got involved, and um, then this strike action was obviously a big blow for ev everyone. Um, and Martin Russell had taken over at, at that stage then, you know, so it was it was tough on Martin, it was tough on myself, I was still there in the, in the assistant role with Martin. Um, and, and then towards the end of that, like the PFA had advised the players not to train, which was, that was really tough, you know, um, as, as a coach and as a management team. That's tough when, when players aren't training and, and it was tough on the players as well. 
But they feel they had to make a stand and they were right because seven weeks without wages is, is, is a long time uh, and it should never have got to that. Um, but thankfully it was all sorted out and uh, they're back playing now, which is the main thing. Yeah, and then for you coming in second time as, as caretaker mm-hmm. manager, how did that come about? That, that came about when, when actually Martin Russell <laughs> resigned. Um, uh, Jerry Mulvey rang me again and, and he said, look, would you like to do it a second time? Uh, I didn't think I could because you're allowed to do it for 60 days, but he had been on to the FAI. Um, the FAI had told him that they, they would give permission for me to do it for a second 60 days if needed. Um, and, and I had a chat with the chairman at the time, which was Jerry Mulvey, and, and the deal the deal was that you know he would help me get on the pro license if, if I went back in, which obviously was something that I wanted to do. Um, went back in knowing it was going to be a big task because during that time when players weren't paid, we were allowed players were allowed to leave, and we lost five really good players. Um, so the squad was light, and so now going new going back in, it was going to be difficult. But I just felt you know why not why not give it another shot? I enjoyed working with the players, so uh, yeah. I they for... they must seem like they enjoyed for you. Like I mean, how many teams did you say that before I could go off air that you said? You know, tra- I think you trained once, or did you not train at all? I went to beat Sligo. Yeah, uh, yeah. Before the Sligo game, and um, that was actually Martin Russell's last game, but we we didn't train that week. The, the week up to the Sligo match, we didn't. We, the players didn't train at all. You know, and uh, came in, put in a, an incredible performance against Sligo, and, and ran out worthy winners. Um, and and then the following week there was no game because of European matches. So the players didn't train that week, and then it was the build up to the Bowls game, and and that's when Martin had resigned, and, and I took back over. So new going into the Bowes game, it was going to be a really tough task, and the the, the plan hadn't seen the players since the Sligo game, so I hadn't seen them in two weeks. And walked into the dressing room that night, um, it's strange, really strange, you know. But the plan was to try and stay in the game, you know, try and frustrate Bowes a little bit. Um, it didn't happen. It didn't work out like that. We gave away soft goals, and you know, Bowes were clinical on the night, and you know, our fitness levels and our sharpness levels really showed, and. Obviously, Bowles ran out 6 0 winners then, which was disappointing. But in fairness to the players, after that, we regrouped. We came back in on, on the Sunday morning and uh, we all decided then that we'd do extra training sessions. So you've got to give credit to the players there. They, they knew they lost a bit of sharpness over them two to three weeks, but they decided to do extra sessions. And for the last two weeks up until I was there, they had been doing extra sessions. So I think they deserve a bit of credit for that as well, you know. Yeah, and obviously, you do yourself. Like, do you, how do you feel walking away from the club after four years? Of service, yeah, uh, of course I'm disappointed. Um, I, I didn't walk away. <laughs> you know, p- people have, have asked me that. Did I walk away? Where, where I didn't. You know, I, I had a chat with Milo Driscoll on, on Monday, and the new owner, and he informed me that a new manager had been appointed, and he wanted to bring his own staff with him, which is fair enough. It's football, you know, and uh, I wish Gary all the best with it. You know, he, he's, he's a big job on his hands, but it's one that he, he's going to enjoy because there's a good bunch of players there to work with. So, I think he'll enjoy it, but. Yeah, I was disappointed, um, but look, that's football, we move on. After all that, um, you put out a statement, on, was it your Facebook or all social media? Yeah, it was through social media, um, it, it was on Tuesday, Tuesday evening, um, I, I just put up my own statement, you know, I just wanted to, to get a statement out just to thank the people that I'd, I'd worked with, you know, uh, and it was overwhelmed by the response that I got on that, you know, it was being unbelievable the last couple of days, the, the phone hasn't stopped, you know, with well wishes from people and um, the, the players found out Monday night and, and again every one of the players got in touch with me which, which was fantastic you know and, and it's great and um, that phone calls text messages uh, Facebook Twitter Instagram you know it, it, it was I was blown away I really was and I just want to say a big thank you to everybody that took the time to, to send the message you know because um, it, it, all the people in Bray the fans in Bray were fantastic with me when I was there you know and uh, I, I do wish the fans well, you know, because they're, they're a great bunch of fans. They're really loyal and they've been through some tough times. So I do wish them all well. And again, thanks to everybody that took time to send me a message. Yeah, fair play, fair play to everyone uh, and anyone who's watching as well. If you if you haven't thanked Graham and you like to, you can do so in the comments. Uh, I'm sure it's to be absolutely welcomed. Um, now, back to managerial uh, game. There's a game in September. There's a charity game, I do believe you're going to be a manager of the Le- Legends Eleven, yeah. including Paul Scholes. What's it going to be like managing someone like him? Uh, yeah, I, I, I have no idea. You know, it's a terrific occasion. Um, it's the Wicklow Hospice. and uh, This has sort of been in the making for the past 12 months. And myself and, and Tony Brown, who does fantastic work, you know, the Legends Eleven work, himself and Colin, they do brilliant work there for people. But 
we we uh, myself and Tony have been talking on with Jerry Mulvey in fairness, Jerry Mulvey has been fantastic with these games. He helped me out in the past with the Celtic game for Jared Dugan. Jerry Mulvey was fantastic with that. And again when we went to him about the Wicklow Hospice game, he said, Of course, there's no problem, the Carlo Ground is available. Anything you want, it's there on the day. So this has been in the making for twelve months. Um and obviously then you're waiting to try and get players involved, which is Tony's end of it. And um They've done terrific work, some of the players that they've got in, but obviously Paul's goal was, you know, was unbelievable to get someone like him playing in the Carlisle grounds and offer a fantastic Yeah, game. there's also rumour to be uh, Luke Unrath, Stylian Petrov, and um, there was one other, Cleverson as yeah. well. So there's, there's some big names coming over as well. Huge names coming over and a great occasion, you know, for anybody that gets to go to that game. And I think there's a couple of ex break players uh, coming in to play against these players okay. as well, you know, which is... It's just going to be a great day, you know, and, and these charity days do be good. And I just hope people come out and support it because it's not every day you get to see the likes of Paul Scholes playing so close to home, especially in the Carlo Grounds, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love going to them. Obviously, I've been involved in the last two of the Celtic and the Man United ones, and a, a, a great buzz. And the, the players that come over are generally really nice as well. So that actually really helps as well. Like, I mean, they're more than happy to stop and talk to fans and stuff like that. Whereas with the modern era, they're kind of a bit distant from fans, I find. Yeah, like, I, I know last week you met up with John Hart and I've seen some of the stuff, you know, and it's brilliant because you're, you're right, the, the, these people are fantastic people. Um, if we go back to Jerry's match, you know, one of my idols going up was Henrik Larson and to, to see him that day and how he interacted with people the whole day, you know, from when he arrived to the lunch beforehand, to the game, to after the game, to the dinner that night. You know, just really, really nice people. Tom Boyd, fantastic person. And again, I know you've done the Q and A with Tom Boyd out in New Bell, and what what a great person, you know. And, and they're brilliant people. And if and again, I'll just say to anyone, if you're around, come out and support it. I think it's ten euro a ticket, so it'd be a fantastic occasion. Ten euro to see Paul Scholes on your doorstep. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Um, and then lastly, Graham, just what's next for yourself? Um, are you going to go get that pro license? That's the plan. Yeah, the plan is, is to apply for it, um, which I'll do next week. You know, so you have to get a couple of references sent off with that application. So I'm just waiting. I'm sure it. judging by that social media reaction, you, you, <laughs> you won't have you won't have to go too far. Hopefully, hopefully, you know, and um, hopefully I'll get on it then. Obviously, I meant to be working with a club to, to get on it, so we'll, we'll see what happens. And uh, I just hope to get back into football, you know, and spend a bit of time with the family now for the next week or two. And and then see what comes up but uh, I've got a, a couple of offers already you know to, to go back in with junior level and so senior league level and, and I got a nice phone call yesterday from from uh, someone in the League of Ireland so I'll just weigh up options um, it's and, always nice to have options of course it is you know and, and again you know it's great to, to feel wanted you know so uh, yeah no, I look forward to it and hopefully be back out coaching sooner rather than later well Graham uh, I wish you all the best uh, anything you do now in the rest of your career uh, managerial awards or whatever you decide to do um, so thank you very much for coming on the show no problem at all Paul it's been an absolute pleasure thank you no problem at all uh, guys if you like this video uh, give it a thumbs up uh, if you haven't subscribed do so now we're aiming to get to 3000 subscribers Graham is a subscriber his son here is the cameraman and he's even subscribed so uh, get on it and do it it's a small click of a button uh, it really helps us out and uh, we're aiming to get that 3k before the end of the summer so uh if you could help us out, that would be massive. If you haven't followed us on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, get on it now. Uh, and as always, thanks for watching. If you want to uh, wish Graham well for the future, do so in the comments. Thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Have a great day.